Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 40 of the video series in which we program an entire video game from scratch beginning to end in the C programming language. So this is episode 40, so 40 hours of programming, so this is about one work week uh, is how far we've come. If you were to just work on this game uh, the entire work week, this is about how far we would have gotten. So last time we were working on uh, the last two episodes, really, we've been working on mini, mini Z uh, file compression and decompression. We basically made our own command line tool that uses the mini Z API uh, to create an archive like how we want. And now we are going to, hopefully today is the last day that we're going to have to mess with this. Uh, then we can move on to something else. Uh, all we have left to do now is to go to our game and write a write a little routine in here to uh, to to extract assets out of this archive instead of loading them from file the way that we have been doing. So here is our game. If I go down to uh, WinMain. Let's see, where do we start loading stuff? Where? Right about here. I think this is the first thing we load. So we're, we're basically going to stop using load 32 bits per pixel bitmap from file, and we're going to start using uh, another function, something called something like load, archi or load asset from archive, something along those lines. Um, And then we'll have to modify each one of these um, to take out all of the stuff where it picks the file up from disk. Instead, it'll, we'll just have it deal with uh, some some memory, uh, some heap memory. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to make a new function declaration. I'm going to put it down here with all the others, way down here. I'm going to call it let's make it a D word load load asset from archive we're going to take um, the name of an archive uh, which will be assets.dat. We are going to take in the file name that's inside the archive. So uh, asset file name. I think we're probably going to need an enum to tell the function what type of what type of asset it is um, because we. Maybe we want to load a WAV file. Maybe we want to load an AUG file. Uh, maybe we want to load. Maybe we, we want to load um, uh, a, a BMPX bitmap. I'm trying. I, I'm talking and thinking at the same time. I'm thinking: Do I want to do something like? Um, resource type and then the you know resource type something like that even though we haven't defined a resource type yet um, or do I want to basically dynamically infer it I mean I could put the code in load asset from archive that would automatically figure out what type of file we're dealing with based on you know some metadata um, that sounds like a lot more work so I think I'm gonna do the easier thing right now which is just to make an make a new enum uh, and supply the resource type and then finally we're gonna do uh, we're going to f going to uh, resource yeah just like that 
So the reason, and again, this the reason why this needs to be a void here is because um, essentially we don't know what it's going to point to. It could point to any any very different type of resource type depending on what type of resource we're trying to load. So um, we're just going to say here, here's a pointer to a thing, and you know, figure out what kind of thing it is using some other means. We need to we need to define this resource type though. Um, resource type. So let me go up here and make an enum out of this. Let's go find our other enums. Uh, here we go. Okay, and we're going to call this uh, resource type wave file. Resource type. Um, og file. Since we have, remember, we're using og of Orbis for our music. We're using regular wave files for our sound effects, and then we have resource type. Um, tile map. We also have that kind of resource. Uh, what else do we have? Resource type BMPX. I think those are all the kinds that we have right now. Yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go down here. Copy that. And then start building this function. Okay. Now, essentially, the first, the beginning of this function is going to be just like the decompress function that we wrote in mini Z, um, which I could probably just go ahead and open that now. Uh, mini my mini Z. See, there we go. This is just kind of a recap from last time. If operation equals operation extract, uh, it's going to be just like this. We're we're extracting files from this archive. Oh, that reminds me. Something else I wanted to do. Since um, I'm specifying, I want to supply an archive name uh, to this function. But at the same time, I really, I, at the current moment, I'm only planning on having one single archive file uh, for this entire game. Um, so I'm going to define asset file asset stop that. Okay. Alright, so the first thing we, we want to start with is mz underscore zip, which since IntelliSense is not helping me here, is making me think maybe we forgot to include... I thought we already included this stuff, did we not? No, I guess we didn't. Interesting. Okay. In that case, let me go back here 
and let me shift gears for a second. I'm going back to my mini Z, and if I go to mini Z.C, and I go down to this enum right here. Okay. To completely avoid mini Z, doesn't use structs for any of this stuff. So here's what, what I think we're going to do is I think we're actually going to change some of these uh, signatures and what that's going to do is it's going to slightly uh, change the format of the zip file so that other tools can't read it. Other tools such as 7-zip or WinRAR or the built-in zip uh, thing in the Windows shell, whatever, um, it'll, it'll mess up the file format just enough so that uh, regular tools won't be able to read it. Um, that being said, it's not like it's. I'm not making this hack proof. I'm just. I'm just sort of like making. I'm raising the bar a little bit so that if you, if someone really wants to go in there and mess with our assets, um, they have to try just a little bit harder uh, to do so. So, I'm going to put a note in here that says. I modified some of these constants to make um, unreadable by most tools. Those are the same. End of central directory locator signature. These are not the same. 
So I'll just make something up. MZ zip data descriptor ID. Okay, so now let me build this. Succeeded. Go to my mini Z x64 release. This one that was built just right now. now we're going to copy into game B and we're going to overwrite this executable here with our new version that has modified constants in it replace the file okay but we also need to make sure that we go back here to my mini Z we'll take this file mini Z.C mini Z.H copy them copy them into the game B repository so make sure we have updated versions in here replace okay uh, very well I think we're done with that now let's go back here we're going to include add existing item header file mini Z dot H and we're going to go here to source files, add existing item mini z.c. And source repos, let's make sure it's the right one and the correct path. And it is. Um, oops. oops. Okay. Let's make sure that. I got the new version in here, which I do. Close that. Close that. Main.h, main.c. Okay, so I think I think I can go right. Hmm. Include include many z dot h right there. We'll see if I get a ton of error, a ton of compiler warnings from many z dot h the way that I did when we were making my many z. Still building. Okay, good. We did not. Build succeeded. So now let's go back down here and continue where we left off. We need an MZ zip archive. And it's going to be called archive. We need a pointer to a buffer and we're going to call it decompressed buffer we need again I'm gonna go with size T uh, I don't know if I want to use size T or not and then so I'm gonna all right bool 
file found in archive equals false. So like I said, this is basically a lot of this is going to resemble just like what we did um, previously in my mini Z. Uh, but this time we're, we're actually going to extract to the heap on purpose this time. When I was making my mini Z in the previous episode, I thought I was going to extract the file into heap memory first and then from there I was going to manually write it out to a file but what ended up happening was is that I found a function that would actually just write it to a file for you automatically so we got to skip a step but this time I actually don't want to extract it as a file like I really want I don't want to extract a file onto the disk I really do just want to extract the data into private process memory, uh, memory that is private to this process. So the decompressed file is never actually going to hit the disk. It's never going to be written to the disk. It's going to be decompressed into memory. So if mz zip reader init, we have to initialize the thingy, and we're going to archive. Um, our, uh, we need a... Okay, mz zip reader init, sorry, reader init file. That looks better. Okay, archive. Uh, no, it's archive name, sorry. Wait, no, it's archive. The file name is going to be archive name. And then the flags is going to be nothing. MZ false, which MZ false is zero. It doesn't. It's just that's defined in mini Z dot H. Okay. And if that failed, what did we do? What did we do when we did this in my mini Z? I guess I shouldn't have closed it. Mine easy. Mean dot C. That's what we did. Okay, we have a I wrote this simple file exists function last time for my mini Z, but I, 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 the more I think, now that I think about it, you know, now that I've slept on it, I, I realize it's probably not necessary, at least not in our game, because I bet if I call this function right here and the archive doesn't exist, I'm sure this function will return an error as well. So it kind of makes this extra, this, it, it makes this separate call for does this archive actually exist or not it makes that call redundant uh, because this piece right here pretty sure it already does it for us so let's see game B not doing print f's here and we're not doing return there so to exit we need to actually do we need to do a log message error mz zip reader edit file failed with that error Here we got archive name, archive name. Okay, now we have a good error message. I wonder if I need to close this, or I probably have to close this. I'll think about it. 
Okay. Iterate through each file in the archive until we find the file we are looking for. For file index equals zero. File index less than in Z zip reader get num files in the archive. And this returns an MZ uint. And so let's just cast this for an int. Okay. Uh, File index plus plus. Really? File index plus plus. There we go. For each file in the archive, do the following uh, MZ zip archive file statistics. Pressed file statistics is a data structure. I'm going to do if mz zip reader file stat archive file index so I wonder if there is a, a thing in the API where you could just specify the name of the file that would probably save us the time of iterating through all the files but as far as I know this is the right way to do it um, compress file statistics. And if the result of that operation is MZ false, then we are going to do the same thing we did up here. reader file stat failed with error an archive file let's do archive percent s file percent s Archive name, file name. Or what's it called? Asset, asset file name. Okay, good. We need to compare str string not case sensitive comparison compressed file statistics dot m file name asset file name and if the result of that comparison is zero that means they're the same that means that we found the file that we're looking for so file found in archive equals true and where let's keep going um, if decompressed buffer equals mz zip reader sorry that was my phone uh, mz zip reader extract to heat extract extract to See, I, and and honestly, I don't know what the difference is between like where it says extract to heap and extract to mem. So let's just try extract to heap. I'm pretty sure this is fine for our purposes. So we're going to specify archive. Again, we specify uh, file index, not file name. Uh, we're going to give it the pointer to the. Uh, did I make a did I make did I even make a variable for extracted file size? D 
decompressed size. That's what it's called. Decompressed size. Let me read this. Size. Size. Uh, okay. And then no flags. Don't need flags. If that results in a null decompressed buffer. See it's going to return a pointer and that pointer goes into a decompressed buffer. Okay, so now we should have a decompressed asset file in the heap. Um, okay, we need to do, if that failed, then we need to report the error as usual. Whoops. Okay, MZ zip reader extract to heap failed with error archive file. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. I'm worried though because I don't actually know if MZ zip get last error is going to return non-zero. I'm just kind of assuming that this function is going to return something that's non-zero. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of worried about that. I'm also thinking, you know what, we probably need I need I need actually to look up this, uh, this API here. I need to Google MZ zip reader int. Ends archive reading, freeing all allocations and closing the input archive file if MZ zip reader init file was used. The question is, what if, like, uh, so I'm going to call it down here so that it's always called mz zip reader and archive. Um, but this worries me too because what if archive is what if archive is still null, right? I initialized it to null. If mz zip reader init file, what if that fails? At what state will that leave the archive variable in? What state will that leave it in? And if I go down here to my epilogue, mz zip reader in, what if I call that on an archive when the archive has not been initialized? Is that going to crash the game? I honestly don't know. Um, these are probably questions that we need to get the answers to. So um, I'll look that up. But as for now, uh, for right now, let's just continue with this function. Okay, so we're we found the file, we've extracted this data to to the heap, and right now we have no idea what kind of data it is. It's just a blob in memory, um, and the only the only way we know what kind of file it is is because the caller passed in resource type. So, for zip file, oh yeah, we can also, we can break here. See, because if we, if we found what we came here for, there's no need to continue iterating through the rest of the files, right? So, if I break here, it will break out of the nearest for loop and we will continue right down here. So this is good. Uh, so if we didn't find it, if file found in archive, if that is false, then this function, then we report the failure, error, file, not found, 
and we say we say file percent s was not found in archive percent s percent delete lx. The file name, asset file name, oh come on. That's not what I wanted. Asset file name. Sometimes I wonder if I'm better off without IntelliSense. I really wonder that. Uh, archive name and error. Okay. Good? Good. Okay. And so if we're at this point, then we are guaranteed to have our file. So we're going to say switch resource type. And here's default assert expression unknown resource type. Case resource type wave break wave og tile map PX and that's should be it. Um, so at this point I basically just want to dispatch to each one of these functions that we've already written. Like if, if the resource type is resource type wave, then I want to dispatch the data that we have decompressed from the archive to load wave from file. But we're obviously not loading away from file anymore. We are now loading away from memory. And but I don't, I don't necessarily want to scrap these functions just yet. So we instead are going to, I guess, make new functions. Uh, we may end up scrapping them later because we don't need them. But as for right now, I'm not ready to just delete that entire function yet because we worked so hard on it, right? So this is load wave from file. So what if I made a new function called load wave from memory? And it takes in a, I mean, do I need to use byte pointer? I'll just use void pointer. It's, it just needs to be a pointer, right? Um, buffer and then in out game sound Game sound. Right? And follow from memory. We'll do. Alright, let's go to the very end of this file. going to basically copy this function and then just remove the bits of it that we don't need anymore because we're not reading a file from disk anymore. We're just going to point it at some memory. Okay, let's see. Okay, we don't need we don't need a file handle anymore. We're not reading from a file. We don't 
we need this. Uh, we're not reading that. Riff, uh, the variable riff is basically the first four bytes of the of the memory. So I think I could do alright. Let's not over no need to overcomplicate this. Uh, mem copy. Our destin it goes our destination, okay, it goes into riff. Probably is gonna go into yeah, because that's a D word. So that's where that's the destination. Uh, the source is going to be the buffer that the user passed into us, and then the size is going to be size of keyword. Okay, it's going to copy that into riff, and now we no longer need this piece because we're not reading from the file anymore. Okay, so far so good. First four bytes of first four bytes of memory buffer are not riff. Function error, go to exit. It's good. Okay, set file pointer. Obviously irrelevant now. Okay, so twenty bytes in. We need to do the same situation where we're doing mem copy, we're copying into game sound wave format. It's already okay, so we probably don't need that. Maybe. Maybe we do. And then the source is going to be source is going to be buffer plus twenty. Twenty bytes in. And then the size is going to be a size of wave format EX. So do I have any idea if this is going to work or not? The answer is I do not know. We'll just have to run it and see. But we're going to assume, all right, this, the wave, uh, the wave data in the memory buffer did not meet the format requirements. Okay, that part's good. Set file pointer, data chunk searcher. Okay, so what we're basically doing here is mem copy. Destination will be data chunk searcher. The source will be our memory buffer. Plus what? Data chunk offset. Data chunk offset. 
course, now this needs a type. Okay. And then we're reading four bytes at a time, right? We no longer need the set file pointer or the read file. Data chunk searcher, data chunk offset gets incremented by four. That, okay, data chunk not found of the memory buffer. And copy. We're copying into data chunk size. The source will be buffer plus data chunk offset plus four. word at a time, four bytes at a time as usual. So now, isn't that what we're doing? We're setting it to data chunk offset plus four. And then we're reading into data chunk size. So we no longer need that. We don't need that read file, which means we no longer need the number of bytes read variable uh, okay data okay okay we don't need that set file pointer okay here's our audio data um, which we no longer need to allocate this memory because we already have we already have it in the heap we already have this data in memory audio data already have the data in memory. So what if uh, we don't allocate this since we already have the data in memory, I'm not gonna allocate that. This is still good. Okay, data chunk offset plus eight. And then we read it into, we read that. Uh, audio bytes, set file pointer read file. Okay, okay, okay. So what if we do this? What if we just not do any of that and instead we set game sound buffer dot p audio data to what if we set that to buffer which a naturally needs to needs a type because we're about to do some pointer arithmetic buffer plus Is it data data chunk 
offset plus eight plus eight. I think that's it. Which of course now we no longer need we no longer need audio data. So just in case this isn't making any sense to you, uh, let me draw what I'm trying to do. Let me go over here. Now, if you recall from when we wrote that load wave file from disk function, Let's pretend that this block of memory is a wave file. Recall that at the very beginning of the wave file, there's a bunch of metadata. All this metadata at the beginning of the file, which is you know x number of bytes, includes things like the size of the audio data and the format of the audio data, and then you know various other little pieces of information. And then when you get to about right there, that becomes the actual uh, start of the audio data itself. So all I'm trying to do is see this very beginning of the file right here. This is where buffer starts. Okay, that's the very beginning of buffer. So buffer plus some offset will get me to right here to the very beginning of the audio data. And if I can just find the address of this spot right here, that's where I need to point P audio data to and say this is the start of the actual audio data. So what I that makes a lot of sense to me in my own head. So I'm going to Comment that out. Successfully loaded percent %s from memory. Um, I, uh, I loaded. Successfully loaded wave from memory. Failed to load wave from memory and error. Okay, so I hope that is correct. We're about to put it to the test. Let's go back to load asset from archive. go down here we'll do error equals load wave from memory it needs a buffer the buffer is going to be a decompressed buffer decompressed buffer and we're loading it into Actually, we're not, we don't need to do that. We need to just do, yeah, into resource. Okay. Where are, where did you go? Where'd you go? Resource. It's going to give us a, oh, I figured it would give us a, it would complain about the lack of data type there because the function is expecting a pointer to a game sound and we just gave it a pointer. Let's see if it builds. Build succeeded. 
and even though the compiler is not complaining about this right now, I have a feeling it's going to. Sometimes it just takes Visual Studio some time to catch up. That's fine. Okay, so and we'll we'll do all these other resource types later. We, I doubt we'll have time. Um, I doubt we'll have time to do them all in in a single episode, but that's okay. Um, now let's go back to WinMain and let's go to let's go find a wave file that we load somewhere there's bmpx bmpx tmx there we go splash screen dot wave all right let's try this let's try to comment that out and replace it with load uh, sorry I don't know. load asset from archive the archive name is going to be asset file the asset file name is just going to be splash screen dot wave we don't need um, if you recall we didn't preserve the directory structure there's no directory structure in our asset file in our archive uh, and then this part will be resource type resource type wave and then our resource that we're loading it into is G sound splash screen and if all that was not successful then you know what we need to do we need to complain and exit the game okay everybody good so this is the splash screen dot wave so the proof is in the pudding so if I run this game and the splash screen noise plays that means everything worked perfectly everything from packing the wave file into the assets.dat archive to this game extracting the wave file back out of the assets.dat file at runtime loading it into the resource correctly if that all works then I'm going to be I'm going to be shocked I'm going to be shocked if this all works without having to debug it let's run it and see what happens That was our splash screen sound. It worked perfectly. Wow. Let me go look at the log file. Uh, let's see. So we haven't we have a yeah, copy assets.log. We already know that works fine. Let's see, there's our where we added it into the archive, and let's see what else we have. Um, game B dot log scroll all the way to the bottom here okay load aug load wave load wave load wave from memory successfully loaded wave from memory so yeah that part works great um, I think I might go back and sprinkle in a little bit more a little bit more um, logging just because you know me I love logging stuff so I might log maybe some uh, some addresses and some other debug information in there other than just logging errors sometimes I like to log informational and debug stuff in addition to just into in addition to just logging the errors um, but wow that was that was really successful let's see how much time uh, we have left um, Ah, so we have 
no time left at all, do we? Okay, so let me see. What else? So obviously I have to finish all the rest of these. Uh, all these different types of, um, what do you call them? Resource types. You know, I've got to do the same, you know, load aug from memory, load tile map from memory. That way we've, re we've replaced our entire suite of load resource from file functions. We no longer are loading files directly from, you know, a uncompressed, you know, that is, it's great. It's great. I'm very happy with it. So um, where I'm going to go from here uh, in, the, in the very near future, what I'm going to do from here is once I have everything loaded from asset file, I think I'm going to group all of these things into a new function called um, load assets or something and then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make that the entry point of another thread and this will be cool because it'll be the first time that we've ever actually created a separate thread in this game up until this point uh, this entire game has been completely single threaded with the exception of X audio because you know X audio X audio 2 creates a whole bunch of threads in your process but those aren't threads that we we don't really have any control over them we're just we're using DX audio 2 engine uh, and it's like spawning threads in the background um, to play sounds on we didn't really have any control over it anyway I'm gonna create a new thread called the uh, asset loading thread I'm going to use that thread to load all of these assets because as you've noticed it every time I add more assets and you know it has to like decompress them now and it takes time it's, it, the load up the loading time of this game is starting to get longer and longer and longer uh, so what I would like to do is I would like to create a loading splash screen and it's going to say something like I actually I think I might actually piggyback on top of the Actually, the normal splash screen that we already have, where it flashes, you know, the name of the game studio or whatever, and then I'll have a little blinking cursor in the bottom to let you know, to let the player know that the assets are still loading. You know, loading. Please wait. Dot dot dot. And in the background, while the user is looking at that, we're going to have a separate thread that is doing all the loading and decompressing of all of these assets and then when it gets done with that that thread will then set an event that tells the rest of the game it is okay to move on uh, to the title screen now so I just I don't know I came up with that um, I'm just kinda of like talking off the top of my head that's my idea uh, for uh, what to do next time well within the next two episodes because I think next time will probably be uh, just finishing the rest of of these uh, functions here the rest of these resource types so um, anyway I, I'm pretty sure that's all the time we have for today so I'm gonna go ahead and call it um, if you enjoyed the video if you want to see me continue with this type of content um, then please like and subscribe and tell your friends and also don't hesitate to ask any questions or make any comments that you might have. Uh, leave your comments on the video. Um, it can be about anything on any episode. I will address any upcoming or any interesting comments in an upcoming episode. Um, also, don't forget that we have a GitHub repository that I keep updated alongside these episodes uh, so that you can follow along at home. And with that said, uh, I will see you this upcoming weekend. Have a good one. Bye.